<laughs> tomorrow is tomorrow. Today is today. That today is today. Yeah. It's a good one. Okay. Can you guys hear me all right? Yes. Excellent. Then welcome, welcome everybody. Um, happy Wednesday. My thought for you is, uh, I don't know, around this time every year, because we say it is liver season and it is, I start to think about your livers. <laughs> your liver is my liver. And um, the thought that comes along with that is um, this concept of being, feeling free and easy in your life. Right. So the liver is often described as the organ that energetically is associated with our resentment, right? our irritation, our annoyance, um, feeling overly restricted, overwhelmed and uh, unhappy right? with what we're doing and what we're getting back from it. So that sense of bringing ease into your life, bringing ease into your experience is a big one for taking care of your liver. It's not just about how do I detox or how do I get rid of things that I don't like, it's how can I bring ease into my life, right? Even though my life might still require me to do things that I'm not excited about. I might still have obligations and responsibilities that are not easy, but I can bring easefulness to that. I can bring easefulness in. And that that I feel like is the season that we're in is that place of softening so that things can continue to expand and to grow and to you know, move as it needs to move and as it needs to be expressed. So when we let go, or we're not in that state of restriction, then things become much more naturally what they are meant to be, right? They become more easeful because we are more easeful, right? Not, necessar not necessarily things become easy, but they become more easeful because we have become easeful, right? So that's what we're practicing in this time. So I want you to practice today for the sake of your liver, right? Smile at your liver, smile with your liver. Um, and with that thought that can I bring ease to this practice, not struggle? Can I bring ease to this practice, not irritation? Can I bring ease to this practice, not um, striving, right? So comfortable seat if you're not there already. Let the eyes close. And just for a moment, fall into the breath, become aware of the breath. And not just that you're inhaling and exhaling, but that that inhale and exhale is effortless. that if you try to control your breath, you can maybe make an inhale or an exhale longer or shorter, you can hold, you can release all of that. But if you just let go, the breath happens. This is sort of our fundamental tenet for yoga and any form of meditation is that if you just let go, things happen. And this is what we call the easefulness, effortless effort. Just one or two more breaths to let yourself drop in away from wherever you've been all day. Reminded that there is a flow that is beyond you, that is always beyond you, but that carries you. And if you let go, you will be carried. One more deep breath in. As you exhale that breath, you get all the way, make it a slow, long exhale. As you get all the way down to the tail end of that breath, draw the navel in towards the spine, scoop the belly up under the ribs, keep pushing the air out, exhaling, 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 exhaling. Keep letting the breath go. Round your shoulders, drop your back, exhale, exhale, exhale. And then go ahead, let the breath flow in. And exhale normally. Hands come to heart center, palm to palm. We'll open with the sound of Om. Deep breath in. eyes float open. Nice, you guys. Inhale the arms up to the sky. You can stay seated. Deep breath in. Interlace your fingers. Press heels of the hands up towards the ceiling. Push out through the baby fingers. Press out through the edges of the arms. Good. And then release the hands. Twist to your right. Left hand to right knee. Right fingertips back behind you. 
Good. So as you breathe in, you're getting longer through your spine. As you're exhaling, you're scooping into that middle back into your low belly again and taking yourself a little deeper into the twist. And then keep your ribs in the twist, but turn your gaze over the left shoulder. So look the other way. That's it. Good. One more breath. Move the ribs in one direction, gaze in the other. And then come all the way back to center. Inhale the arms up to the sky. Good. Twisting to the left, right hand to left knee, left fingertips back behind you. Breathe yourself longer. So inhale longer through the spine, pull up. And then as you exhale, navel draws to the back of your spine. So you're really scooping the whole front of the body to the back of the body, hugging. Good. And then keep your ribs moving to the left. Look to the right over the right shoulder. Good. As you look to the right, again, it's a softening of the shoulder away from the ear. So it's a lengthening of the arms, a lengthening of that muscle between the shoulder and neck. And then come back to center, inhale the arms up to the sky again. One more time, twist to your right, left hand to right knee, right fingertips back behind you, get taller, drop into your seat, draw the low ribs in, belly back towards your spine. Good, ribs twisting to the right, look to your left. Again, feeling that right shoulder drop away from your ear. Nice, and then all the way back to center, inhale the arms up to the sky, twisting to the left, last time, right hand to left knee, left fingertips back behind you. Inhale, taller through your spine, like you're pulling each vertebra apart, space. And then exhaling, navel to spine, so you're releasing into the back body. And then keep the ribs where they are, turn your gaze to the right. Good, softening left shoulder away from the ear. And then all the way back to center, please. Inhale the arms up to the sky and then take the arms all the way out to a letter T and then take the right arm over top of the left in front of your chest, wrap the forearms. Good, eagle arms, deep breath in, lift the elbows. Exhale, bring the elbows down and in towards the ribs, round your back. Good, keeping the shoulders again wide away from the ears. So the scruff of your neck, the back of your neck pulls up. Good, but the shoulders go wide and then come all the way back up to center. Lift those elbows again, a little higher. Squeeze the shoulder blades towards the center of the back. Good, exhale, bring the elbows down and in again, round into the back rib cage and pull up through the scruff of your neck and get wider through the top ridge of your shoulders. Awesome. And then come all the way back up, stretch the arms out wide, letter T. And then take the other arm on top, left arm over top of right, wrapping the forearms. So Nancy, if you can have elbow on top of elbow, so that little bit of a deeper, yeah, cross gives you a little bit more stretch through the upper arms. Yep, all the way across. Even more. There you go. <laughs> I know, keep working at it. Good, deep breath in, lift the elbows. Yeah, you got it. And then exhale, bring the elbows down and in, round into your back. And again, lifting through the back of your throat, shoulders wide. Good, so it's a drawing in of the arm bones into the shoulder socket. Awesome, come all the way back up to center. Inhaling, lifting the elbows a little higher, keep squeezing those forearms against each other, shoulder blades draw back and wide. Good, and then exhale, bring the elbows down and in towards the belly. You can expand through the back body, through the back ribs, dropping the chin, lift up through the back of your neck, the scruff of your neck gets a little bit more um, awake. Good, and then slowly release again, coming all the way back up, stretch the arms out and wide. Nice job. And then release the hands down to the floor. Walk yourself forward onto hands and knees. And come into downward facing dog. Tuck your toes, lift your hips. Nice. Pedal your feet just a little bit if you'd like. Beautiful. And then slowly walk your feet forward towards your hands keeping your hands planted as flat as you can. If you need blocks under your hands for that, you can place them there, but walk your feet forward towards your hands. Good, you can come up on fingertips, that's fine. Staying up on your tippy toes though. So stay up on the balls of your feet as you walk yourself forward. Nice, and then start to walk your feet back to downward facing dog, <laughs> planting the hands as you come back. Good, find your full dog, thighs pressing back, heels softening towards the floor, and then walk yourself forward again, feet towards your hands. Good, letting your armpits move forward, letting your gaze move forward, up on your tippy toes as much as you can. Again, you can be on fingertips if necessary, and then walk yourself all the way back downward facing dog. Good, slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. So bring the armpits forward over the wrists. Good, and then bring the right knee forward straight in towards your chest. So right knee forward all the way in, armpits stay over your wrist, squeeze. 
Yes, and then send it back to plank pose. Nice, Jessica. Bring the left knee forward and in, squeeze. Good, so your armpits stay really lifted here. Ribs stay really lifted. And then take that leg back to plank. You got it, right knee forward. Good, squeeze in. Yeah, not out to the elbow, just straight forward. Take it back, plank pose, left knee in. Good, squeeze, 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 lift those ribs. Send it back to plank, one more time, right leg. Good, keep the back of your throat a little lifted here. Yep, take it back to plank pose. Notice how much easier it got when you lifted your head. Take your left knee forward. Good, and then step it back, plank pose, back to downward facing dog, hips high. Awesome. And then drop the knees to the floor, please. Hands and knees. Nice job. Take your right arm out wide to the right. Slide that arm behind your left wrist. Right shoulder finds the floor. Turn your gaze. Good. To the left. And then walk that left arm forward towards the top of your mat. Nice. Press into both shins. Again, feel the front body. So the rib cage moving into the back body so that the whole time you are in this pose is you are expanding the back of your ribs. You're expanding the back of the body. Good. Talking about twisting poses being one of the great benefits for the internal organs or it creates great benefit for the internal organs. And not because it necessarily takes anything away from them, but it gives them the ability to go back to or to find their rhythm again, right? That extra squeeze and release gives them the chance to become enlivened, come back to their original rhythm. Take your left arm up to the sky, please. So still on that right shoulder. Turn the palm to face back, bend the elbow, reach around to find your outer right hip or take that hand flat to your sacrum if reaching all the way around doesn't work for the shoulder. Good. So you're still letting that elbow soften forward towards your belly or towards your back but then you're lifting the front of the shoulder open a little bit more. That's it, nice, Kristen. Good. Nice, you guys, unwind that arm, please, all the way up and out, and then release the hand down to the floor, come back to hands and knees. Nice, make any adjustments you need, and then second side, left arm out wide to the left. Slide behind your right wrist, left shoulder finds the floor, turn your gaze to the right, and walk your right arm forward towards the top of your mat. Good, pressing into the shins. Nice, you guys. Again, front body moves to back body. So where there's that tendency for the front ribs to fall forward and arch to form in your middle back, try and reverse that. Try and draw the low rib cage in. Expansion through the back body. Good. And there's so many of our energy meridians that run through the back the big part of the back or run, obviously the nerves run down the spine, but the energy meridians themselves run through all parts of us. So when you're working with an organ, it's not just physically, how do I squeeze and I release it, but how is the emotional energy associated with that organ moving through me, right? How much do I resent the obligations in my life, the restrictions in my life? How much am I thinking, oh, the things that I have to do instead of the things that I want to do? And how much do I make that harder on myself by thinking about how much you dislike it? <laughs> Take your right arm up to the sky. Keep that left shoulder on the floor. Turn the palm to face back. Bend the elbow. Reach around. Find that outer left hip. Or take the palm flat to the sacrum. Again, whichever one works best for the shoulder. Good. Let that elbow fall slightly forward towards your back or towards your belly. And then lift that right upper arm, right upper shoulder a little higher and wider. So it's going to feel like it comes up towards your ear first and then opens. That's it. Nice, Emily. Good, Nancy. Awesome, you guys. Slowly release, extend that arm back up to the sky and then come back to hands and knees. Good job. Press back downward facing dog, tuck your toes, lift your hips. Good. Right leg comes up and back behind you, down, dog split. Nice, step that foot forward between the hands, lunge. Then inhale, both arms to the sky, high lunge. <laughs> Good, take your arms out wide, cactus arms, elbows bend to 90 degrees, and then send those inner elbows forward, palms back, lift your chest towards the sky. Good. Nice, you guys. And then go ahead and start to twist to your right, please. So turning the belly, turning the ribs to the right. As you turn, send your left hip wider to the left. Scoop your belly, send your right knee forward over the ankle. 
Good. And then bring your hands together at your heart center, please, already in the twist. And go ahead and hook that left elbow to the outside of that right knee. Good. Or again, if the elbow is not going to hook today, then place the forearm on the thigh and just take the right hand to your lower back. Nice. Back thigh kicks a little higher. Low belly draws back away from your thigh, expand the back body, and then open the chest towards the sky. That's it. Throat back. Nice, Harriet. Good. Unwind. Inhale both arms up to the sky. Good. Reach the heart. High, 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 like a back bend. Yes. And then release the hands down to the floor. Nice job. Walk your fingertips forward. Step up to standing split. Use blocks underneath the hands if you'd like. Good. Beautiful, you guys. Flex that left foot. And then bend your standing knee. So that's the right leg, the leg that's under you. So bend that knee and let your weight move your back. So your hips move back in space. So more of your weight comes onto your heel, but your knee is still bent. And then scoop your belly away from that thigh. Feel your inner knee widening to the right. Good. And then press your hips back up to the sky. Let your head drop. Let your heart drop. Standing split. Keep that left thigh kicking up, heel lifting up. Yes. Really nice, Jessica. Good, Mark. Nice, Kristen. Awesome, you guys. And then go ahead and step all the way back. Nice long lunge. Good. Drop that back knee down to the floor. Anjaneyasana. Use a blanket underneath that knee if you'd like. And then sweep the arms up to the sky. Good. Turn your palms forward, please. Make that little claw shape with the hands like you're grabbing a bar or you're grabbing something. And then as you exhale, bring the elbows out and wide. Lift your chest up. So feel yourself pulling your spine long. Good. And then inhaling, stretching the arms back up to the sky. Pull the armpits up. And then exhale, bend the elbows out and wide. Again, like you're doing a pull-up. Awesome. One more time. Inhale the arms up to straight. Reach through the whole side body. Then exhale, bend the elbows out wide. Pull up through your armpits even more. Side body's getting longer. Really good, Joanne. And then come all the way back up. Inhale. Take the hands back behind you. Interlace the fingers at the low spine. Good. Chest lifts nice and high. Stretch those arms any amount towards straight. Hug the upper arms towards each other. And then lift your hands up away from your lower back any amount. So it's a little angling of the hands towards your back heel. Chest can lift into a little baby back bend. Let your pelvis move forward. Really nice, Jessica. Nice, Nancy. Widen that front knee though. That's it. Good. And then release the hands, please. Both hands down to the floor inside the front foot. So back knee is still where it is. Good. Walk your hands forward towards the upper left-hand corner of your mat. Up on fingertips, round your back. So do the reverse of what you just did. So pull up through the middle ribs, pull up through your low belly, round, round, round. Good. You got it. And you're still like in that Anjaneyasana, but your back is rounded. Awesome. Nice, you guys. And then walk your hands all the way back in. Good. Lift the back knee up, step back downward facing dog. Good, slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. And you can either stay here or drop the knees to the floor if you need a little bit more support. Breath of fire, deep breath in, deep breath out, and then start to pump your navel, go. Keep your throat up everybody, keep your chest open. Yeah, so again, if knees need to be on the floor, do it, but move your belly, move your belly. Good, if you're jumping around like a little jumping bean, then you're doing a little too harsh with the belly, right? In and out, in and out. <laughs> Good. I know, a couple more breaths. Go, go, go. In and out, in and out, in and out. Good, deep breath in, pause and hold. Lift the armpits, lift the inner thighs. Yes, good, Mark, good, Emily. And then go ahead, back to downward facing dog. Exhale. Good, drop the knees to the floor, please, child's pose. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah. A cleansing breath, right? Breath of fire moves things so that we can come back to a more natural rhythm. So it's great for when there is stagnation, things are moving a little slow, but it's also considered a good way of removing excess energy when things have been moving habitually too fast, right? Gives you a way to come back to equilibrium, natural rhythm. And that natural rhythm is the one where we're going to feel the most ease. 
So we can't make up for ourselves a rhythm that's going to be relaxing as we have to find the rhythm that is relaxing to us. Good. End of the next breath, walk yourself back up to hands and knees. Good, do a little hip circling. Just good, it looks like maybe you're getting some cramps or something like that, so just keep, I don't know, you're doing things with your feet that I'm not sure what you're doing, but we'll see how we go. All right, come back to stillness, please. And then tuck the toes, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Again, pedaling the feet just a little bit, move your hips from side to side. Good. And then steady your heels, please. Nice job. Take your left leg up and back behind you, down dog split. Good, step that foot forward between the hands, lunge. Inhale, both arms to the sky, high lunge. <laughs> Beware of dog. Take your <laughs> palms forward, bend the elbows out wide, cactus arms, and then start to take your twist. So take the lift the chest a little higher first, and then go ahead and take your twist over to the left. So turning towards that front knee, elbows stay wide. Good, don't let the elbows drop below the edge of your armpits. Beautiful. And then go ahead as you're lifting, as you're twisting, bring your hands together in front of the heart center. You're already in that twist. So keep moving through that squeeze of your belly and then bring the right elbow to the outside of your left knee, please. Pressing the knee wide and pressing the palms together and squeezing the shoulder blades or drawing the shoulder blades towards the center of the back. Lift the sternum open towards the sky. Good, belly moves up off of your thigh. So don't drop into the twist, expand into the twist. Beautiful. Nice, you guys. And then go ahead and release, taking the arms all the way up, inhale. Good. And then release the hands down to the floor. Awesome, walk your fingertips straight ahead, use blocks if you need, step up to standing split. Right thigh parallels the floor. Good. Turning that outer right hip down towards the floor so can you have a level pelvis as best you can. Bend your standing knee. And as you bend your standing knee, move the weight of your hips slightly back so that more of the weight has to fall into your standing heel and then press into the ball of the foot. Scoop your belly, widen that left inner knee and then start to take your hips back up towards the sky, dropping your head, dropping your heart, lifting that right thigh higher because your torso is dropping. Good. So it gives you more access to, I can lift that thigh, lift that thigh, lift that thigh. Good. Awesome, you guys. And then fingertips to the floor, step back, nice long lunge, drop the back knee, use a blanket underneath the knee if you need for Anjane Asana, low lunge, inhaling the arms to the sky, or sometimes we say crescent lunge. Good, nice, you guys. Turn the palms forward, like you're grabbing that pull-up bar again, deep breath in. As you exhale, bend the elbows wide, pull the chest up and feel that squeeze of the lower armpits. That's really what we're getting into here. And then inhale, stretch the arms up, get taller through your side ribs, pull the low rib cage in. Exhale, keep it in as you bend the elbows out wide, feel those lower armpits squeezing in. So it's right around your rib cage. Inhale the arms up one more time, get super tall through your side ribs. Good, and then bend the elbows out wide. Feel like the shoulders are going wide away from the ears as you lift through the back of your throat and squeeze those lower armpits. Good, nicely done. And then take the arms back behind you, please interlace your fingers. Good, keep that same length in your side body. So pull up through your side ribs again. Don't let the ribs pop forward. Pull everything in, draw it in, soften it in. And then as you hug those upper arms, stretch the arms any amount towards straight. Elbows can still stay bent, but lift those hands up away from your tail a little bit more. So you have this angle on the arms reaching back towards that back heel and let your pelvis move forward. Really nice, Emily. Nice, Harriet. Nice, Jessica. Good, Joanne. Nice, Mark. Good, Nancy. Nice, Carolina. And then come all the way out, please. Stretching the arms up to the ears if you'd like, and then release the hands down to the floor, both hands inside the front foot. Walk to the upper right-hand corner of your mat, up on your fingertips, round your back. So pull everything into the back rib cage, pull everything into the lower spine. Yep, you're exactly where you should be, Mark. Just round your back. Good. Easefulness. 
is how do we take where we are overextended, overexerting, overwhelmed, and back ourselves off of that edge instead of pushing ourselves over the edge and then trying to correct it afterwards. <laughs> Good, walk your hands back in, please. Nice job, lift that back knee up. Good, and then walk yourself to the right, please, until you come to the center of your mat, straight in both legs, turn the toes, prasarita parottanasana. Good, breathing deeply. Nice, you guys. And then walk yourself just slightly, planting that right hand a slightly left of center or reaching for your left ankle, your choice, whichever is more accessible. Left hand comes to the sky or a hand comes to your lower back, palm flat to the sacrum. Good, again, option for breath of fire here. So a deep breath in, a deep breath out, and then begin to pump the navel, go. Good, keep your twist, truly a, a good structured twist. So your inner thighs are going wide, your throat is moving back. So everything is still a really good solid twist, but you're also moving the navel, right? Moving the breath, moving, squeezing and releasing internal organs. Good, keep going. Nice, and again, if there's strain, you release the hand back to the lower spine. Good. Deep breath in, lift and lengthen in all directions. Hips high, heart high, good. And then exhale, release the twist, kind of taking both hands back to the floor. Awesome. Nice job, you guys. And then walk yourself back towards the top of your mat, right toes turn forward. Good, it's actually your left toes turn forward, looks like, sorry. <laughs> Spin your back heel up, step back downward facing dog. You know, and you're like, but we didn't do the twist on the other side. Don't worry about it. Good, slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. Lower down slow to your belly. Good, point the toes back behind you. Rise up, cobra lift, head, neck, and chest. Nice, and then release back to your belly, please. Stretch your arms out wide, letter T. Palms facing down, good. So you're gonna roll onto your right hip here. So your right arm stays extended straight out from the shoulder. Start to roll onto your right hip. Good, stacking the legs, stacking the shoulders. Good, that top leg can step back behind you if you'd like. So you can step your left toes to the floor behind you with the knee bent if you choose. You can keep that left hand either in front of you for balance or some of you might want to reach that arm back uh, almost like you're reaching for the right wrist, right? So you can take that into a little bind as well if you want to. Good, so the shoulders are stacking, hips are stacking. Good, it's just stretching through the shoulders. Nice. This is similar to how we would do this stretch on the wall. So if you're trying to figure out if you're doing it right, it should feel similar to when you have one arm extended on the wall and you're twisting away from it. Good. finding ease, which is beyond the hecticness or the restrictiveness that we really impose on ourselves, right? There's what's suggested or what's put in front of us in our life, but the restrictiveness of it has very much to do with how our mind interprets it. So we're asked in yoga to be looking for where is freedom, what's the experience of freedom, and part of that is knowing that there is nothing that really has the power to bind you but you. Right? Your life is not what makes things difficult or what makes things um, challenging or restrictive. It's your mind that does that. And your mind controls the degree to which that is happening. One more breath. And then slowly release, please, rolling back towards the belly. Good, stretch the left arm out and wide, just moving to the other side. Make sure it's in line with your shoulder before you start and then start to roll onto your left hip Good. Again, the option is to take that top foot back behind you, knee bent if that feels like it's better balance for you. The right hand can either stay in front of you to continue to press into the floor to open the chest and shoulder a little bit more, or you can take that right arm up, bend the elbow, turn the palm back and bring that arm into the little bind position. Good. Saying in yin yoga, this is referred to as starfish. 
which I kind of like because, you know, no matter how many times you try and take a starfish apart, it just continues to grow more arms, right? It regrows itself. So that endless renewing, a great quality. And we have it too. We just forget. We assume that everything is the way that it was yesterday or that we're stuck in the way that things have been. Our mind can never change when in fact your mind is changing all the time. So the freedom exists in you. The easefulness exists in you. And it's not something we can decide to be, but it's something that we can find. What's the attitude in me? Where's the place in me that is easeful? And when I know what that feels like, then I can keep coming back to it. And there's nothing in my life that can really destroy it. Take one more breath. And then slowly unwind. So rolling back towards the belly, please. Good, forehead to the floor, hands nice and wide, but walk them back alongside your middle rib. So a wide-armed cobra come up onto your fingertips. So again, separate the hands a little wider again, up on fingertips. And then pressing down through the front of the thighs, lift up head, neck, and chest. Good, spinning the inner elbow slightly forward so that your collarbones go wide, your sternum lifts up. Good. Nice, Kristen. Nice, Nancy. Good, Mark. Wide shoulders, everybody. So really, as you press into those hands, engage those lower armpits, lift the throat longer. <laughs> yes, there it is. Nice, heart. nice Harriet. And then slowly release, please. Good, press up to hands and knees and come back, child's pose, knees wide. Good. Feeling the breath, expanding the back of the heart, expanding the lower spine. Is ease being something that you don't have to concentrate on, you don't have to create it, it just is. When you let it be, when you let things go. So your natural rhythms assert themselves when you are not imposing attitudes, you're not imposing ideas, you're not imposing irritation. Good, walk yourself back up onto hands and knees and find your way back downward facing dog, tuck the toes, lift the hips. Good, right leg comes up and back down, dog split. And step that foot forward between the hands, lunge. And then walk your fingertips straight ahead, step up, standing split. You can use blocks underneath the hands if you need them. Left leg parallels the floor. Good, bend that standing knee again. Again, moving the weight of your hips slightly back, weight into your heels, widen that right knee a little wider to the right so you get into the outer hip, scoop your belly, and then start to straighten that leg. Good, dropping the heart a little lower, kicking the left heel a little higher. Good, bend your knee, your left knee, kick your heel in towards your butt and then lift that thigh a little higher, come up on your fingertips or up onto your blocks and then lift your chest. So it's like you're doing a little back bend, almost dancer pose or scorpion variation. Good, knee points down to the floor. Don't let it roll open, chest up, chest up, chest up. Awesome, now keep your chest nice and lifted, extend that left leg back to straight. Good, and then keep the, uh, let left hand on the floor, take your right arm to the sky or to your lower spine, revolved Ardha Chandrasana. Again, you can always use a block underneath that left hand. Nice. And then optional, bend that knee again, kick the heel in towards your butt, reach back for the foot or the ankle. Good. Notice I keep using the word optional. So don't forget that optional means not required, <laughs> right? Optional means it's just a thing that could be. Lift your chest open. Yes and then extend all the way back out, arm and leg, full twisting pose, and then release the hand to the floor, step yourself back to lunge and downward facing dog, both feet come back. Nice job. Vinyasa, if you'd like, child's pose if you prefer, if you're doing the vinyasa, you're sliding forward to plank, lowering down to your belly, rising up cobra. Good. And finding your way back to downward facing dog. If you're in child's pose, meet us back in downward dog. Good. 
Good. Then left leg comes up and back, down, dog split. Extend out through that heel. Step the left foot forward between the hands. Good. Walk the fingertips straight ahead. Step up, standing split. Good. Right thigh parallels the floor. And again, bending your standing knee. Good. So the weight of your hips moves slightly back onto the heel. And then the inner knee widens a little bit to the left. Your inner thigh widens a little bit to the left. And then scooping your belly, start to press your hips back up towards the sky. Drop the chest, drop your head, kick that right thigh as high as it'll go. That's it. Keep your weight on your heel. Awesome. Good. And then bend that right knee that's in the air. Kick your heel in towards your butt. Start to lift that thigh up a little bit more. And then as you've lifted that thigh as high as it will go, come up on your fingertips or blocks, lift your chest higher. So you start to create the back bend after that thigh is already lifted. Good, so low belly in, low rib cage draws in. Good, pull those arms up into the shoulder socket. Really good, Kristen, nice, nice, Jessica. Good, and then stay lifted through your upper body. Start to extend the right leg back to straight. That's it, and then right hand stays where it is. Left arm comes to the sky or hand to your lower back. Begin to twist, open to the left. Revolve Ardha Chandrasana. Remember, the weight of your hips is still drawing slightly back. Your armpits are pulling forward and kick everything up towards the sky, the back of your heart and your heel. And then the option is to bend that right knee, kick your heel back in and reach for the foot or the ankle, which means you gotta lift that thigh higher again. And you gotta lift your shoulder open. Ooh. And you gotta take deep breaths. Awesome. And then slowly release, extend all the way back out. Great job, Kristen. And then release the hand, step back to lunge, step back downward facing dog, both feet back. Nice job. Good. Slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. Good. Lower down slow to the belly. Nice. Rise up cobra, lift head, neck, and chest. Good. Exhale, downward facing dog. Tuck the toes, lift the hips. Beautiful. Right foot steps forward between the hands. Walk both hands inside the front foot, come to the center of your mat. So keep walking to your left until you come to the center. Turn the toes, straighten the legs. Good. Prasarita Padottanasana. There you go. Nice, you guys. And then you're walking your left hand just to the right of center or reaching for your right ankle. Good. And then that right hand is either coming to the sky or a hand to your lower back. Again, you might just be holding the twist here, but the option is breath of fire, deep breath in, deep breath out, begin to pump your navel, go. Make it easeful. It may not be an easy breath, especially in this position, but keep your head lifted, keep your spine long. Again, make it a good twist and just happen to be moving your navel in and out. So it's a squeeze, release, a squeeze, release, squeeze, release but make it easeful. The moment you introduce extra tension, you introduce extra striving to try and make it happen, is that's when we start to lose our natural rhythm, right? We're imposing something. So this might be a difficult position, but make it easeful. Good. Nice deep breath in, lift and lengthen everything. Good, and then exhaling the breath, release the hands down to the floor, unwind your twists. Good, hang for a moment, hold opposite elbows. Good, if you need to bend the knees slightly, sway from side to side, whatever you'd like as your version of release. Beautiful. And then let the hands softly touch back down to the floor. Good, walk back towards the top of your mat, right toes turn forward. Good, spin the left heel up. Good, and then take your right leg up and back behind you, down dog split. So stretch that leg up and back. Bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, stack the right hip on top of the left. Good, lighter in your hands, lift your armpits up. Awesome, and then bring that right knee forward and wide, pigeon pose, so point the knee at the floor first and then swing the leg all the way forward and then out wide towards the wrist. Good, left heel crosses towards left hip point. Nice. And sending your outer lift, left hip forward just a tiny bit more and walk yourself onto your forearms. 
Good. The forearms is my suggestion because for a moment, I want you to press into your forearms, round your back, lift your middle rib cage. Good, dropping the chin towards your chest. And as you round your back, see if that allows you to actually drop your sit bones, drop your tail towards the floor any amount more. Good. Nice. And then just softly release through that space behind the heart, but without thinking I'm pushing my ribs forward, you're just softening. You're trying to keep that fullness, but you're relaxing with it. Good. And then if you want to turn your elbows wider or rest the forehead on a block or something like that, go ahead. If you're happy where you are, stay. Good. Can you breathe into your organs themselves? So not just into the body as a whole, undifferentiated mass. But can you pick a place and say, I'm breathing for that organ? And what does that organ need or what does that organ represent as an aspect of myself? How do I bring ease to that part of my life? You know, we talk about the liver as being an organ that does a lot of detoxing and it does. It's part of the system that removes toxins, filters the blood and all of that sort of stuff. But it does so much more than that, right? It creates. It creates what we need in order to sustain our cells. Blood sugar. It's related to so many more things than just getting rid of toxins. Let's say it's a chemical factory. We sometimes say the chemical factory that runs your life, your liver. And so if we are imposing restriction, that becomes what our body mirrors. And that restriction becomes illness, dis, dis ease, as it's said, right? So you bring ease back and the body finds its natural balance again. Good, you guys. Walk yourself back up onto your forearms or up onto your hands. Again, optional here is to bend the back knee, kick your heel in, reach back right hand for the foot of the ankle. So twisting quad stretch. You could also just go for the open twist. So if you don't wanna reach back to the thigh, just staying on the left forearm, take the right arm to the sky or staying on the fingertips. But if you're reaching for the thigh, go for the reach. Good, chest open. Awesome, really beautiful. Nice, Jessica. Nice, Kristen. Nice, Joanne. Good, Harriet. And then slowly release, please, bringing the foot back to the floor, walking yourself back up onto your hands. Beautiful. Good, lift that back knee and then step your right foot right between your hands. So scoop your belly, <laughs> step your right foot between your hands. One step, go. Yes, excellent. One step with four parts. Perfect. Drop the back heel, baby toe parallels the back of your mat. Good. Have your strap within reach here if you want it. Just cartwheel the arms up to warrior two. Good. So coming into a uh, option here for a bound side angle. So this is where you might want your straps. So right forearm comes on to front thigh, please. Left arm comes over the ear. So this is step one, side angle pose. If you're going for the bind here and you want your strap, you want to grab it now. Take it into your left hand. If you're not using the strap, then take, simply take that left arm straight up to the sky, turn your palm to face back, bend the elbow, reach around, find the lower spine or reaching for your outer right hip. If you're using the strap, the strap is hanging down behind you between your legs. And then if you're going for the full bind, let the right hand come down to the floor inside the front heel. So your shoulder is inside your front knee. And then you're snuggling your shoulder back into the knee and taking that right hand underneath your thigh and reaching up to find either the strap or trying to find the fingers of your left hand. Good, if you're holding hands or using the strap, you want it around your thigh crease, not in the middle of your butt. <laughs> so make sure it's far enough forward. And then really keep that right shoulder drawing towards the inside knee, squeeze your right butt cheek back and in, open the chest towards the sky. This is a twisting position, right? It's an open twist, awesome. 
Nice, you guys. Release the bind. Right hand finds the floor or block. Left arm comes to the sky. You can drop your strap. Straighten your front leg. Triangle pose, trikonasana. Just coming straight up, pulling the hips nice and high. Awesome. Nice, Nancy. Yeah, just let that hand touch down. And even here, try and find that same feeling of letting the shoulders float back to be in line with that front thigh. Good. So the right shoulder moves back. And then that means that the left rib cage can open more. Beautiful, Harriet. Nice, Mark. Good, Jessica. Awesome, you guys. Bend the right knee, please. Good. Release both hands to the floor. Spin your back heel up. Step your left foot forward just a little bit. Take both legs to straight. Pars Votanasana. Use blocks underneath the hands if you need. Good. <laughs> Children, dogs, visitors. Good, you guys. Up on your fingertips for a moment, even if you're not using blocks, lift and lengthen your spine, pull the hips back in space. And then as you're pulling your hips back as much as you can, try and bring your shins forward. Yep, both shins. So your knees get softer, but the tops of your thighs pull back. Yep. Good, now maintain that left hand stays where it is on that block. Take the right arm to the sky or hand to your lower back, twisting open to the right. So a softer version of a twisting triangle. Good, but a way that maybe you can really feel equilibrium. You can feel balance between the pelvis and the shoulders. Good, and squeeze into your belly. Awesome, and then release that hand back down to the floor, unwind your twist, beautiful. Step back downward facing dog. Good, vinyasa if you'd like, child's pose if you prefer, or stay in dog. If you're doing the vinyasa, you're sliding forward to plank, lowering down to your belly, rising up cobra. Good, exhaling, downward facing dog. Good, and then if you're in child's pose, meet us back and down dog. So I can remember what the heck I did. <laughs> Good, left leg comes up and back behind you, down dog split. Bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, stack the left hip on top of the right. Did we not do revolved Artha Chandrasana on this side? Is that the thing that I'm missing? Hmm. Point the knee facing the floor. Please step the foot forward between the hands. I know we did something before pigeon. <laughs> oh, well, we'll find out. Walk your fingertips forward, please. Step up standing split. I think this is what we did. If not, you're doing this pose on the, on the second side again. <laughs> Sorry. Good, so bend that standing knee, please. Widen the inner knee, scoop your belly. Good, and then send that leg a little higher, please. Good, right hand stays where it is, left arm to the sky, revolved Ardha Chandrasana. I think we did do this on this side. Oh, well, you're doing it again. Good, bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, reach back for the foot of the ankle. Cosmically, I guess you needed it a second time on this side. Yes. Good, and then slowly release, extend it all the way back. Good, release that hand to the floor. Good, step it back to that lunge pose and then take the left leg up and back. I know why, Never mind. I found myself. Left leg up and back behind you, down dog split. I know what I did before that got me all confused. No problem, good. And then take that left knee forward and wide pigeon pose. Yeah, so you just got a bonus revolved Ardha Chandrasana. Good for you. <laughs> Scoot that right hip forward, please. So again, really set your pelvis towards that square orientation and then walk your hands straight ahead. Come on down to your forearms. So not just collapsing onto whatever your usual position is, but onto your forearms and then round into your back. So pull up through your middle rib cage. Good, you can even drop the chin if you'd like. And with that space that maybe happens in the lower spine or in the side body, you can send that right hip spinning forward maybe a little bit more. Maybe you can even feel your sit bones drawing back towards the floor a little bit deeper. Good. And then lift the sternum forward again, lift your throat, soften that space at the back of the heart, but try not to fall into pushing your ribs forward. And then if you'd like to widen the elbows, drop the forehead to your hands or to a block, go for it. If you're happy where you are, stay. Good. Nice, you guys. Adding ease back into your life. 
seems like a strange thing to put effort into trying to find ease, but that's when we're overwhelmed, all of our effort is already so directed into that pattern that if we don't insert opportunities for ease, we don't create the moments where we can stop doing whatever we've been doing excessively. We don't do things like breath of fire that help just to bring us back to an opportunity for equilibrium. Then we just keep running in the direction that we are. Part of that liver energy is realizing how excessively you create restriction in your life. Either through stagnation or overactivity, it doesn't matter which. That the circumstances you cannot control do not dictate how you feel. Feelings that arise yogically, we know that if we allow them to move through us instead of attaching to them, then we simply move through what's in, in front of us. We don't get stuck. So if you feel like you're stuck in pigeon, <laughs> you can always adjust, you bring ease. Good. And walk yourself back up onto your forearms or onto your hands. Bend your back knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, reach left hand for the foot or the ankle. So twisting quad stretch. Good. And again, if you're not reaching for the foot and you're not doing the quad stretch today, totally fine. Just stay on that right elbow or that right hand to take your left arm straight up to the sky. Twist. Good. You got it. Nice, Mark. Open the chest. Nice, Kristen. Nice, Nancy. Good, Harriet, good, Emily. Really beautiful, you guys. Slowly release, please. Taking that foot back to the floor, releasing the hands, walking up onto the hands, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, scoop your belly, step that left foot right between the hands. One step, go. Yep, pull up, yes. Excellent, and then drop that right heel, baby toe parallels the back of your mat. The more you do that, the easier it gets, right? <laughs> Start to feel graceful. Take your arms up to warrior two. Again, if you want your strap, make sure it's within reach. So beginning in side angle, left forearm comes onto the front thigh, right arm comes over the ear. And if you're using your strap for the bind, you want the strap in your right hand. So you're gonna take that right arm up to the sky, turn the palm to face back, bend the elbow, bringing that arm around to find your outer left hip, good. Or to let the strap hang down behind you. Nice. And then the second half of the bind, bring the left shoulder inside the left knee, hand reaches down to the floor, and then slide that arm underneath your left thigh and reach up to either find your fingertips or find the trailing end of your strap. Good. Making sure the arms are wrapped around your thigh, not your butt cheek. Good. Send your shoulder back into that knee, squeeze the left butt cheek back and in. So you're keeping your hips in line with your ankles, chest opens more. Good. Nice, Nancy. Nice, Emily. Good, Harriet. Really nice, you guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good, and then slowly release the strap, release your bind. Good, right arm comes to the sky, left hand to the floor or a block, straight in your left leg, trikonasana, triangle pose. Good, and that same idea of trying to draw the left rib cage, lower rib cage back in space so it's in line with your thigh and then stacking the right rib cage open more. Sternum to the ceiling, beautiful. Shoulders wide away from your ears, which means your neck gets longer. Excellent. Nice, you guys, bend that left knee, release the hands down to the floor, spin your back heel up, step your right foot forward just a little bit, take both legs to straight, Parsvottanasana. Again, using blocks underneath the hands if you need, even if you don't need. Good. And then come up on your fingertips so that you can get a little bit more length in your spine. So armpits move forward away from the hips, hips move back away from the armpits. Good, and then right hand stays where it is on the floor or a block, left arm comes to the sky or left hand comes to your lower back. Start to twist the belly open to the right. So it's again, it's a little bit more of a balanced position 
of a revolved triangle pose, but you can still get very deep into the twist of the belly here. So pull your ribs up, send your thighs back, and then bring your shins forward. Lower legs go forward, tops of thighs pull back. Yes, good. And then release that hand down to the floor, please. Nice job. Step back downward facing dog. Good. Slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. Lower down slow to your belly. Good, bend both knees, kick your heels in towards your butt. Good, root those thighs down to the floor. So tops of thighs or the lower knees, I should really say lower thighs, right above your knees, roots down to the floor. And then pressing into your hands, drag back, lift head, neck and chest. So cobra pose, but with the knees bent. Good, watch that you don't just push forward through the front of your pelvis or through your ribs, but you have this real elongation of your spine. Beautiful. And then slowly release, belly back to the floor. Keep your knees bent, heels in. Reach back now for the ankles if you can. If reaching the ankles is not a possibility, just keep your hands on the floor. If you're reaching for your ankles, go ahead and go there. Good, bend your elbows just a little bit. Kick your feet back into your hands and try to recreate this feeling of that lift at the front of your pelvic bones. Good, and then start to lift your thighs up, kicking your feet into your hands and lift your chest up as well, keeping your elbows slightly bent. Good, and again, if you're not holding your feet today, hands alongside your ribs, just lift back up into that cobra variation. Good, Nancy, kick your left foot back into your hand a little bit stronger so that your legs are more balanced. Good, deep breath in you guys, reaching heart forward, hips back. Nice, and then slowly release. Good job. Good, forehead to the floor, make a little pillow with your hands. Separate your feet a little wider on your mat. Wiggle hips if you need. Good. Right, the energy meridian lines for the liver, many of them, or a big one runs down the legs into the feet. Energy lines for the gallbladder very associated, not just physiologically with the function of the liver, but energetically as well. Runs through the shoulders, upper neck, arms. So the entire body is engaged in this emotional and psychological and spiritual experience of the world. So when we practice, we're not practicing just to squeeze an organ and release it. We're practicing to understand that aspect of our life that is represented by that organ. So it's liver season. It doesn't just mean take care of your physical liver. It means start to bring ease back into your life. Start to realize where you've become excessive, either in stagnant ways or in overactive ways and start to start to bring yourself back to a regulation that is not so imposed by what you think is correct, but where you give your body space to tell you what the rhythms that are natural to you are. So if something is bothering you, right? Liver, gallbladder, energy, something is annoying you, you seek to understand why you are annoyed and not just because something's uncomfortable and you don't like it. How do you bring ease to that? Nice, you guys. Flip yourself over onto your backs, please. Good. Bending the knees, shoulder stand. So again, if you're not doing a full shoulder stand today and you wanna place a block underneath your sacrum and either take your legs straight up towards the sky or hang out, um, in bridge pose is that both are completely valid options. If you are doing full shoulder stand today, set the arms alongside your ribs, elbows bent, fingers up, draw the knees in towards your step, in towards your chest and start to engage the lower belly rolling on the spine forward and back and then set those arms nice and strong, lift the hips, taking your hands to the lower spine and then take the legs up towards the sky, reaching through the inner edges of the legs, zipping up from your middle ribs all the way through your pubic bones at the very base of your pelvis, pull up. Good, pressing down into the upper arms, get wide through that space between the shoulders and ears. Nice. 
And even if you are in the supported shoulder stand where your back is on a block, try to still press down through the top ridge of your shoulders. Feel that little lift that happens at the armpits, right? So your, the ribs lift up as the shoulder girdle roots down and wide. So even if you're doing the supported variation, you're still opening the upper back. Good. And again, finding your breath. Nice, you guys. Good. If you don't know where your liver is, it's on the right side, right side rib cage, a little higher up than you probably imagine. You've probably heard a thousand times to take care of your liver. You do lemon in your water, eat bitter greens, drink a lot of water. But what you probably don't hear a lot of is find time to relax. Switch your mind from I have to do it to I want to do it. Let your toes come to the floor above the crown of your head to plow if you'd like. Give yourself ease and the liver will be much happier. Don't obsess about the things that you dislike or that feel restrictive. Just find the places where there's ease, where you can insert that. Liver will be much happier. Good. One more breath in your plow pose, reaching long through the spine. So lift your butt to the sky. That's it. Good. And then slowly find your way back to shoulder stand. If you're coming through that, if you feel like you're just done, you want to roll out from plow, you're welcome to do that too. But take a breath or two in full shoulder stand. So you again have that elongating, the lengthening of your spine. And then slowly start to release, rolling down the spine, one vertebra at a time, bending the knees in towards the chest as your hips come towards the floor. Good, if you have the block underneath you, release it, let the hips come back to the floor. Beautiful. And pause with the spine nice and relaxed, feet flat, knees bent. Take your arms up overhead, hold opposite elbows, relaxing the arms to the floor. Separate your feet as wide as your mat. Good, let your knees drop to the right, both knees. Good, and then optional right ankle comes on top of left thigh. Good, if the knee or the hip or any other part of you doesn't like that, feel free to keep the foot on the floor. And sometimes in asana, we say that we are trying to direct the flow of prana in specific ways, and we are. That's what the poses do. But then we have shavasana, which is where we let go and we say, okay, body, cleaned out all the lines. Now find your equilibrium. Come back to center, please, planting both feet as wide as your mat. Drop the knees to the left. And again, the option is to place the left ankle on top of the right thigh. Again, if that doesn't work for any body part, feel free to keep the foot flat on the floor. Nice, you guys. And then slowly release, coming back to center, please, releasing the arms. Good, stretch the legs straight out in front of you, both legs straight out. Either flex your feet or point your toes, your choice, but keep the legs together. Arms alongside your rib cage, turn your palms to face down, slide the arms or the hands underneath your butt. So you're snuggling the arms close to the side ribs, preparation for fish pose. Keep your butt down, keep your thighs rooting down. And again, active legs, either completely flexed or completely pointed, your choice, but active legs. And then as you press down into your forearms, arch from your armpits, lift up. 
Good, bringing your heart towards the sky, widening that space between shoulders and ears. Let your throat lengthen to the top of your head, just drops back, touches the floor. And you continue to push down into the forearms, lift your armpits. Good, so the forearms are a little bit of a prop, right? To help you lift through the back of your spine a little more. Nice. For those of you who feel really sassy and really comfortable in this pose, if you wanna keep pressing down into your seat and stretch your legs up to uh, an angle off of the floor, you are welcome to do that. If that feels like it's a crazy amount of effort, stay where you are. Nice, keep your butt rooting down, armpits up. Yes. And then release the legs back to the floor, please. Good, unwind the arms, relax the back of the heart to the floor. Nice job. Hug the right knee in towards your chest, squeeze. As you squeeze that knee in, push your shin back against your hand like you're doing a little on your back lunge. Good. And then hold behind the thigh, extend the heel up towards the ceiling. Press the thigh into the hands and come into spinal twist, bringing that leg across the body straight if you can, if you need to bend the knee, you can, but a straight leg twist, bring it all the way across. Good, keeping the hand at the back of the thigh or the calf, really continuing to draw that right heel or the right toes up towards your left shoulder. Good. And then still in the twist, bend the knee. So you soften that straight leg, bend the knee, and then find your way out of the twist, coming back to yours back, squeezing the right knee in towards your chest. Just a complete reversal of how you got in. Good. And then release that right leg down to the floor, bring your left knee in, squeeze. Pressing the shin back against your hands. Again, that little bit of resistance, decompress the hip. Good, and then hold behind the thigh, please. Extend the heel up towards the ceiling, pressing the thigh back into the hands. Again, resistance. Beautiful, and then start to come into your spinal twist, taking the leg across your body, all the way over straight leg twist, keeping the right hand underneath the calf or the thigh, or reaching for the ankle. Left arm extends wide. Good. Nice, you guys. We keep reaching through that leg on the floor as well. So you're pressing out through both heels. Good. And then still in the twist, bend your left knee. And then as you come out again, it's a softening. So as you unwind your twist, you draw that left knee back in towards your chest, squeeze it in. Nice, and then bring the right knee in as well. So hug both knees in. Bring your shoulders up off the floor, forehead to your knees, squeeze. And then slowly release, extending the legs out in front of you, arms alongside you, palms face up. All right, the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> Let yourself rest. And what that means is you drop into a flow that is not dictated by you. You drop what into, what into what is your natural rhythm, a state that is beyond any restriction. Rest.
Very gently bring the awareness back to the breath. Let the body begin to stretch and move in all the ways that serve it well. As you're ready, draw the knees in towards the chest, roll to the right side. You take a moment before you begin to push the floor away, come back to an upright seated position. Bring the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm. And just for a moment, imagining or maybe even feeling the subtle flow of energy that moves through you in an easeful way. That wherever there is obstruction in the body still or wherever there's tightness or restriction is that you just imagine that that flow of energy is able to easily bypass, easefully move through. So that it will soften whatever those things are. It'll soften whatever still stands in the way of that feeling of complete freedom. So this is what I think it's meant by when we say it's liver season and it doesn't just mean deal with your toxins. It doesn't just mean deal with your liver. It means deal with your relationship to the things that feel like obstacles and restrictions in your life, find your freedom. So that's the season is to continue to add ease to everything that you do. We'll close the sound of Om, deep breath in. Om. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your night, a great rest of your week until I see you again. Good work. All those twisting poses were not easy. <laughs> I know you know it, but good work. So I will see you soon. Um, if you didn't see the email, Cheryl's doing a soup cleanse coming up. So if you're interested in that, make sure you jump on it. And uh, anything else, again, if there's stuff you want to see from us, please let us know because we're excited to, you know, change things up if that's what is wanted. And Thanks. let me know if you have any thoughts about that Thursday class, anybody. Thank you. You're welcome. I will see you guys soon. Bye. 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 Bye.